good evening and uh, today's class will be about anesthesia for media sterile masses uh, though these make it, these type of cases are very rare nowadays like in a day to day practice but if you practice in an high volume center or a non co center we can encounter this uh, patients with media sterile mass across wide variety of age groups may be pediatrics or any geriatric patient we can encounter such patients and a perioperative management is like slightly tricky than other patients because of the concerns which are involved in these patients so today we'll be seeing about the anesthesia anesthesia concerns for media sterile mass so what is media sterile mass a media uh, it's a latin word i think which is derived from uh, the meaning is middle so it is midway between the two lungs in mediastinum it is the space between the two lungs in the thoracic cavity excluding the lungs itself so that is mediastinum and in mediastinum actually it is classified into superior mediastinum anterior mediastinum middle mediastinum and posterior mediastinum and the boundaries of mediastinum is superiorly it is bounded by the thoracic inlet inferiorly it is bounded by the diaphragm laterally it is bounded by the parietal pleura and posteriorly it is by the vertebrae and anteriorly it is by the sternum and coming on to the anterior mediastinum it is bounded anteriorly by the sternum and posteriorly by the pericardium and middle pericard middle mediastinum on both sides it is bounded by the pericardium and posterior mediastinum it is bounded anteriorly by the pericardium and posteriorly by the anterior longitudinal ligaments and this anatomical classification of mediastinum there is two classification one is classical model and another is shields model in classical model as i have said earlier there are three compartment there are four compartments but in shields model there are only three compartments the anterior middle and the posterior compartment and and in classical model there are actually four compartments the anterior middle posterior and the superior mediastinum there are four compartments in the classical model and three compartments in the shields model so coming on to the contents of each mediastinal uh, area the superior mediastinum it is mainly the uh, thymus and the esophagus and the superior vena cava and brachiocephalic veins whereas the anterior mediastinum it can hold thymus lymph nodes internal thoracic vessels and tissues and the middle mediastinum it contains the heart roots of great vessels ascending aorta pulmonary tongue the pericardiophrenic arteries superior vena cava pulmonary veins pericardiophrenic veins vagus nerve whereas the posterior mediastinum it the contents are esophagus esophagus and hemiesophagus vein thoracic duct descending thoracic aorta and vagus nerve and sympathetic nerves and the mediastinal masses can be either benign or malignant they can arise from a structure which is already present in the mediastinum or from a structure that passes through the mediastinum through the developmental developmented array or it can be a metastasis from areas of infra diaphragmatic organs such as pancreas or any intestinal organs it can be a metastasis from the thoracic uh, area itself it can be a lung or lymphoma all that can cause a metastatic mass in the mediastinum the mediastinal masses they constitute 3% of all the um, mass from the uh, mediastinum mean, from the thoracic inlet and it affects all age groups it is not pertaining to any particular age group it can affect all age group it can be primary or secondary secondary as i told you it can be from metastasis from an infra diaphragmatic organ may be pancreas or gut or it can also be from a seminoma like you should also examine in if it's a case a male patient an elderly patient you are also supposed to examine the scrotum if it is a seminoma and most of the times than not it is actually asymptomatic the patient will be incidentally diagnosed when the patient is undergoing a routine chest x ray for any other uh, non i uh, mean non cardiac surgeries or any other surgery it is incidentally found out so these things are quite common so what are the lesions which you can expect following a, a in a mediastinal masses in superior mediastinum you can either get a thyroid mass extending retrosternally that is a, a retrosternal goiter or any thyroid carcinoma having a retrosternal invasion or you can have a parathyroid lesion in the anterior mediastinum 
and the superior media stenum you can still get thymo thymoma extension or a thymic cyst you can get a malignant lymphoma neuroendocrine tumor lipoma hemangioma and all that and in the antero inferior compartment you can get a pericardial cyst and a lipoma in the middle media stenum you can get malignant lymphomas pericardial and bronchogenic cyst and in the posterior uh, media stenum the commonest one is a neurogenic tumor and the other one is a gastroenteric cyst and the treatment of each of this will vary may it be a preoperative chemo or radio or may it be a surgical excision followed by chemo or radio depending upon the pathology that the patient is presenting to us with and in the mediastinal mass is the anterior mediastinal mass is most common and it contributes to about 50% of all the mediastinal masses and it is always given by the mnemonic 4T where it uh, consists of thymoma teratoma thyroid lesions and terrible lymphomas and depending upon the effect on the respiratory system these mediastinal masses can either be classified as an extra thoracic lesion which will flatten the inspiratory part of the uh, flow volume curve an intra thoracic lesion which flattens the expiratory part of the flow volume curve or a fixed lesion which can cause a fixed tracheal stenosis that will flatten both the limbs of inspiratory as well as the expiratory curve and why are we discussing this in a different topic what is special for these patients that it is taken as a different class altogether is all these images which i will be showing in the latest slides the thing is whenever you get such patients or any patient for that sake uh, or thyroid mass for that sake so it is imperative that we at least um, look to see how the ct images go where is the trachea where is the esophagus is the trachea compressed or is the trachea deviated uh, is the structure compressing any major it is not that you should know every um, ct image in detail but if you see the ct image this is like this is the iota and this is the pulmonary trunk and this is the bronchus so up until then we should be able to Uh, identify in a given ct picture for to take up any mediastinal mass case or retrosternal thyroid case and they may really ask you like whenever there is a retrosternal goiter where will you see the uh, like uh, in what area you will see the uh, tracheal diameter and all that so all those questions you can answer only by looking at the ct film so here this is a thymoma on the left side of the uh, like left mediastinum left anterior mediastinum and the external extension is impinging upon the pulmonary artery this is the right pulmonary artery this is the left pulmonary artery it is slightly impinging upon the pulmonary artery and this is another image where you can see this is a bronchogenic cyst and this cyst is almost impinging and occluding this right pulmonary artery which you can see here and as you can see anything with air is dark in ct film and hence this is one bronchus and this is another bronchus so as this bronchus and this bronchus both of it are quite narrowed in diameter and another thing which can happen is so what i was trying to tell in this film is it can cause any potential airway compromise as in this case or it can cause an impingement on any major vascular structure which is present in the mediastinum and this is just to continue as you can see this is a mass in the superior mediastinum and anterior mediastinum which is compressing the just a second which is compressing the superior vena cava which is actually present right here so this mass is encroaching upon the superior vena cava so whatever flow is there from the head and neck will not be able to reach the right atrium so what happens is the patient will have an edematous head and neck and the patient will also have laryngeal edema and as well as vocal cord edema so these patients may have hoarseness of voice and this there will be swelling of the torso and there will be dilated veins in the chest in the upper chest alone and there will be a cyanotic appearance because there is no venous drainage and this is classical of superior vena cava which can either be because of malignant lesion or be because of a non malignant lesion here in mediastinal masses it is mostly because that it is a malignant lesion and these patients may present with hoarseness of voice and all these physical appearances which are classical to superior vena cava syndrome and the other concern is as you can see this is a uh, this is a sarcoma which is present in the mediastinum dr can you ask i mean can you mute uh, everyone because i'm getting a 
background noise so this is a sarcoma in the uh, mediastinum where you can see this is the trachea uh, 